Hi there, and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we're looking at how many isomers does C four H six have. All right, we'll be trying to answer this question: How many isomers does C four H six have? Now, first things first. Let's know that C four H six. Is actually an alkyne which is butyne, right? So this is actually butyne. All right. So if I have butyne, for instance, how many isomers does butyne have? Now, in our previous class, when we discussed C3H4, we talked about the concept that alkynes. We said alkynes are isomers with diens. And again, alkynes are isomers with um, cycloalkenes. So cycloalkenes. All right, so we discussed this concept in the last class, and we'll also be using this to answer this question. So if, you, if you've been asked how many isomers does C4H6 have, first things first, you have to identify that it's an alkyne. An alkyne because for alkynes, the general formula is CnH2n minus 2 and when once n is 4 i will have in c4 h into 2n means 2 times n which in this case is 4 then minus 2 that gives you c4 h into 2 times 4 is 8 minus 2 is 6 so c6 c4 h6 is actually an alkyne which is butyne so having said so let's look at the possible isomers of c4 h6 how do we get this done First things first, let's get the butyne structure, all right? Um, if it's a butyne, so we're looking at how many possible different structures we can get with this. Let's start with the concept of butyne. For butyne, I will have C, okay, let, let's start with our, six, um, our four carbon atoms. I'm having one, two, three, four. So I'm having to make this to make this an alkyne, I'll have to put a triple bond. So I'm putting my first triple bond here, then make the other single bond. Now we said for each carbon to be balanced, it must have four bonds. The carbon by the left, right, has the far left has one, two, three, three, left or remaining one, that's H to make it four. The carbon here has one, two, three, plus this one makes it four. So it's um, stable. This carbon here has one, two. It needs two more. So I'm having three and four. The carbon by the far right, this one here, has just one bond. It needs three more. That's one, two, and three. So I have this. All right. So with this concept here, if you look at this, each of the carbon atoms here are balanced. And in total, I have one, two, three, four. That's four carbon. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, that's six hydrogen. So the first isomer I have here is this one here. This compound is actually now not just butyne, but one butyne. So this one here is actually one butyne. That's the name of this compound. Right? Or you can say but or you can call it but one ion. Alright, so this is my first isomer. All right, um, this naming, I've already discussed it in my alkyne video, which is on my website. All right, so you can go to my website and um, get the video on alkynes. So you know why it's one butyne. So this is my, like my first isomer. Now, again, notice when it comes to, I'll leave a link to the website anyways, um, after this video. So let's proceed. Now, notice when it comes to isomers, for this case, we're looking at how many possible different structure. All right. Now, for this first structure, observe that I place the triple bond at the far left, which was this one here before the carbon at the far left. What if I move this this triple bond to let's say the center? So number two, I'm saying it's possible to have one, two, three, and four. This time, I am placing the triple bond at the center like this. So make this a single bond. Make this a single bond. Now, let's balance each of them. The carbon by the far left has one. Let's make it four. So, two, three, four. Now, it's stable. The carbon at the, the left, this, this part here, has one, two, three, four. This is stable. The carbon here has one, two, three, four. Here, one, two, three, four. So, this one is stable. The carbon by the far right now has just one. 
let's make this two let's make this three and finally four so we have this compound this is a balanced structure how many carbons do we have here one two three four how many hydrogen three here and then three by the right that makes it six so i have a c4 h6 now we don't say that if you look at this it might look similar like this looks similar to the first one based um considering the fact that they are both butyne but then their structures are different for this one here what i have here will be two butyne because the the, the triple bond is attached to carbon two counting from the left i have one two carbon two before the triple bond counting from the right i have one two carbon two before the triple bond so this becomes two butyne so 2-butyne is another isomer of C4H6 or you can call it but 2 ion. So observe that I'm having but 1 ion or 1-butyne and then but 2 ion as or 2-butyne as two different structures. That's how this is done. So when it comes to isomers, we'll get as many different structures as possible. Now, for the first one, we kept the triple bond at the far left and we got one butyne. For the second one, we moved the double bond, the triple bond to the center, that's here. All right, and we got two butyne. What if we move the triple bond to the far right, somewhere here? Well, if you move the triple bond to the far right, we would have something that looks like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, something like this. But in this case, observe that if I do my numbering, I'll have one two three four so i'll have carbon one attached or carbon one before the triple bond and that will still be but one ion so hence that would not work all right all right so i've gotten two possible isomers right using the alkyne now back to what i showed you earlier that's this using the concept of alkynes i've gotten two possible isomers for c4h6 which was one butyne and two butyne let's now take the concept of dienes all right how many possible isomers can we have using the concept of dienes so i'll just use the concept of dienes so let's look at the third isomer let's use dienes um we had c3 h uh what c4 so we had c4 h6 let's do a diene so first things first four carbon atoms one two three and four now to make this a a diene of course, it means two double bonds. So the first double bond and the second double bond. This is now a diene. Move this one here. All right, so let's balance this up. The carbon by the far left has two bonds, one and two. Let's make it four. So I have three and four. The carbon here has just one, two, one, two, three, four. This one is balanced. The carbon here has one, two, three. Let's add one more to make it four. Then the carbon by the far right has just one. Let's make it four. So one, two, three, and four. So everything here is balanced. If I look at this, how many carbon do you have in total? One, two, three, four. How many hydrogen? One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a diene that still has the same isomer. How do we name this? Simple enough. One, two, three, four. Four is a boot. For dying, you don't call them but you call them buta. All right, buta what's there? If you look at this, you have carbon one, this one here, before the double bond. Also, you have carbon two before the second double bond. So it becomes buta one, two, dying. Right, so I have buta one, two, dying. Or you can call this one, two, buta. Ta dine. So observe that in boot or, or in the dines, we call them a buta. There's an A added there. All right. So this is like my third isomers. Of course, I, I, as I said, um, I have a complete um, video tutorials on your structures. That's all the homologous series, including the dines. All right. You get a full lecture on them on my website. I will tell you how to get this after the lesson. Let's proceed. So I've gotten the third one. What about the fourth one? Is it possible? So number four. Let's look at the fourth isomer. Is it possible to get an isomer of C4H6 that is still a diene but different from buta 1 to diene? Is it possible? Let's see. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4. For the 
the one in question three, observe that we place the double bonds just after, like after the first one, I place the double bond just after this carbon one, that's on carbon two. What if I separate them? What if I do this one, two, give a space, then come here and do one, two? It's possible. Right, so for this case now, I'll just complete the structure, just single bond here. All right, so this is still a dying in which the double bonds are now separated, you can see, by a single bond. Let's complete the structure. So I'm having one, two, I'll call this three and four. This one here, this carbon here has one, two, three. I'll make it four. This carbon here has one, two, three. I'll make this four. This carbon here has one, two. I'll call this three and I'll call this four. All right. So if you check, each of the carbon atoms here are all balanced and I have four carbon atoms and six hydrogen. This is also a diene. Now, in numbering this, this becomes one, two, three, and four. So observe that carbon one is attached to my first double bond and carbon three attached to my second double bond. So this will be called a buta. Now, the numbers are one and three. So buta one, three, diene. Or one, three, butadiene so this becomes the fourth isomer of the same c4h6 right so one two butadiene is different from one three the butadiene they are very similar but then the structures are different as you can see here the double bonds are placed side by side while here in one three the double bonds are separated by a single bond okay so again is it possible for us to get another, another structure from the diene? Is it possible? Well, not really, not really. Because if I now have one, two, three, four. Now, first, in my first example, I placed the double bonds this way. Okay. In the second example, I now separated them. I brought it this way. Now, if you choose to, if you choose to take off this one here. And then let's say bring the double bond here. And then do it this way. Well, technically, this will still be one, two, right? So carbon one before the double bond, carbon two before the second double bond. So it will still be one, two, both are dying. So no need to stress about that. So we've looked at our possible options for alkyne and dienes. Let's now look at the cycloalkenes. All right, let's look at cycloalkenes. So let's take a cycloalkene for this. So let's see a cycloalkene having four um carbon number five still on c4h6 let's take a cycloalkene cycloalkene becomes one two three four cyclo means is it's in a ring format that's this and alkene means it's to have a double bond somewhere so i'm having this all right all right so there's my double bond so complete the structure the carbon by the far Top, top right here has one, two. It needs two more to make it um, four. So three and then four, I have this. The carbon by the top, um, by um, bottom right here, bottom right has one, two, three. We'll add one to it to make it four. The carbon by the bottom left that's here has about one, two, three. We'll add one here to make it four. The carbon by the top left, that's here, has one, two. We'll add here three. We'll add here four. If you count in total, I have one, two, three, four, four carbon, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, then six hydrogen. So what do we call this? Since it's in the ring format, it will be called cyclo, cyclo, both, of course, double bond, it becomes cyclobutene. All right. Now we, we don't really have to say one cyclobutene. It's not necessary because literally anywhere I place this, it will still be one. So the answer is cyclobutene. All right. So if I look at this, we can see that this C four H six. So therefore, therefore C four H six has how many? Five. Has five isomers. That's your answer. Right. If you have to name the five isomers, the first one there would be cyclobutene. 
you also have one three butadiene you have one two butadiene you have but two ion you have but one ion so these are like the five isomers of c4 h6 all right please okay let me give you a task what about if you have c5 c5 h let's say eight so for c5 h8 can you uh, possibly get the number of isomers here all right if you can leave the answer in the comment section how many isomers does c5 h8 have all right so if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like this video all right hit the like button leave a comment tell us how many isomers you think c5 h8 will have try to possibly see if you can get them also if it's your first time don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content and of course share to your friends so that they can also learn i've made a complete organic chemistry course for all the homologous series from alkanes to alkenes alkynes alcohols butynes and of course um yeah alkynes um the dienes amines amides everything on my website right so i'll be showing you how you can get the course on my website here Thank you and see you in our next class.